Hello, welcome to the FY22 Community Development Block Grant Grant Cycle Informational Session. My name is Robert Scott. I am the Community Reinvestment Director. On my team is Marilyn Denson, Community Reinvestment Program Manager, Kevin Garza, Community Reinvestment Planner, and Brenda Burns, the Community Reinvestment Finance Manager. For today's agenda, we will be talking about a few key things that will help you be successful in your grant application submittal. We will cover an overview of the CDBG grant program, the FY21 funding summary, CDBG project types, record keeping and reporting requirements, applicant eligibility requirements, tips and helpful hints, and actual grant application submittal instructions. The CDBG program was first funded by HUD in 1975. Columbus, Georgia, a HUD-designated participating jurisdiction, has been awarded CDBG funds since the program's inception. The CDBG program has a specific focus on the provision of decent housing and a suitable living environment and by expanding economic opportunities, principally for low and moderate income persons. The Community Reinvestment Department is the organization that administers the HUD CDBG allocation for the City of Columbus. The Community Development Block Grant allows the City of Columbus to engage in a broad range of activities to address a wide range of community development needs. The CDBG program is one of the federal government's longest standing grant programs. The main objective of CDBG is the development of viable communities through decent housing, suitable living environment, and an expanded economic opportunity. Funding for CDBG is very competitive due to the wide range of community needs that can be considered eligible and funded with CDBG funds. Like all federal funds, CDBG is subject to program compliance. Here is a brief summary of our projected use for CDBG funds for FY21. Now we'll talk about CDBG Public Services operating. This funding can be applied for operating costs related to a new service or a quantifiable increase in the level of a service in things like services for homeless persons, seniors or disabled, abused, neglected children and battered spouses, education and recreational programs, child care, health care and public safety services and housing counseling and financial literacy. Now we will talk about CDBG public services equipment. This funding can be applied for equipment purchases related to a new service or a quantifiable increase in the level of a service to include, but not limited to, handicap accessible vans, 16 passenger or more vehicles, security systems, and healthcare equipment. Now we will talk about CDBG public facilities. CDBG public facility funding may be requested for the acquisition of real property, rehabilitation, construction, and improvements of public facilities and public infrastructure that can include, but is not limited to streets, sidewalks, water, sewer, and ADA accessibility. Neighborhood facilities, including parks, playgrounds, and recreational facilities or facilities for special needs populations, including homeless shelters and group homes. Now we will talk about CDBG economic development. Economic development funding may be requested for entrepreneurial training programs. These are programs that assist low to moderate income persons with employability, specifically to build enterprises and create businesses. They also go towards micro enterprise development organizations, which are an entity that fosters the development, support, and expansion of small businesses. HUD defines a micro enterprise as a commercial business that has five or fewer employees, which one or more of whom owns the enterprise. It can be spent towards technical assistance as well as small business incubators. Let's talk about CDBG record keeping and reporting. 
All funded agencies must retain client and financial records for a minimum of five years. For public services operating, you must maintain a client file which includes income verification and proof of residency, financial records, as well as beneficiary reports. For public services equipment purchases, you must maintain an inventory log, financial records, and beneficiary reports. For economic development, you must include client files which include income verification and proof of residency, financial records, and beneficiary reports. For public facilities, acquisitions and renovations, um, for the construction file, it must include procurement information, contractor information, and certified payrolls. For client files, it should include income verification and proof of residency. In addition to those things, we also expect to see financial records, beneficiary reports, as well as Section 3 reports. With that in mind, Let's look at applicant eligibility requirements. All applicants must have one full-time paid employee for at least 12 months prior to submitting an application for funding. They must have a current written strategic or business plan covering at least 24 months, including the entire current fiscal year. They must have a board of directors with representation from the community served and the necessary mix of skills to succeed. Some additional requirements for nonprofits, they must have a minimum two-year operating history after the date of 501c3 determination from the IRS. They must also have an annual operating budget of more than $100,000 as reported in the most recently filed Form 990 or 990EZ. Here are some tips and helpful hints that will help you have a successful submission. Read the instructions carefully. Contact community development staff for technical assistance as needed. Please keep in mind, technical and general questions about the applications are welcome. However, a specific application review will not be offered. Adhere to the list of application submission requirements and list of exhibits. Use the provided checklist in the application to ensure that the application is complete. Tell us everything about your proposed project. Leave no information out. We need all the information that you can provide to us to be able to help us make the best determination on your project suitability. Use the project description to be highly descriptive about your organization and provide all the details of your proposed project. If the description leaves us with questions, this could and will affect your overall score. Be thoughtful about identifying beneficiary goals. You will be held to them. Choose a realistic number of beneficiaries comparable to the requested funding amount and remember that you must maintain documentation on those that you serve. Use the application ratings forms as your guide. Then mock score your application. The application scoring sheet and criteria will be helpful in determining the strength of your application. Some common deficiencies in unsuccessful applications include things like incorrect budget narratives, non-cohesive administration plans, or the community needs statement does not include source material or references. Here are the instructions on how to submit your grant application. The applications are due by 5 p.m. on Friday, March 5th, 2021, and will be accessible through the Community Reinvestment page on the city's website. The link to our page can be found on the screen. Late and or incomplete applications will not be accepted and returned to the applicant. This concludes the FY 2022 Community Development Block Grant Grant Cycle Informational Session.